This is the uh, red grapefruit that's in desperate need of some pruning. I actually planted these trees 20 years ago, which is showing my age, and they haven't been pruned since. So they're really uh, looking quite tatty now. You can see all this dead wood inside. The overall leaf canopy is a lot reduced, and there's heaps of fruit, but they're all small and not really that good. So it really needs a good hard prune just to get it rejuvenated and growing again. Now, as small as this fruit is, we don't want to waste it. Yeah, let's pick it. They're too high, mate. Where you <laughs> so the process we're going to apply to this grapefruit is what we call a skeleton prune. The first task is to get rid of these dead branches so that we can start to see what that skeleton shape is all about. Bring it in the big gun. All right. What's nice about this stage is that we can start to finesse the final shape. We can certainly see what we're doing. And this branch here, with all these ugly knobs at the end, I'd actually take it back harder here, yep. just to give it that nice open shape. OK, so this bit here needs to go. But the thing to remember is you don't need a chainsaw to do this task. A good, sharp pruning saw is more than capable of doing everything we've just done. What I'm doing here is just putting an undercut so that when this piece breaks off, it won't rip the bark down there if it's still connected. And then over here, get started. So you can still definitely tackle a job like this without a chainsaw. Perfect cut. Well, it's looking like a pretty drastic makeover, but I'm happy with this shape. Yeah, I certainly am too. But we will notice there is a bit of white louse scar, these little white pinheads. Now, the sunlight penetrating through here now should clean that up, but you've got to be careful of this bark. So that's why we always do this in late winter or early spring. And that way we'll get all new growth on here before that hot baking summer sun, because we don't want to split this bark from that sunburn. I've done this on trees where people have come home and literally almost threatened not to pay me because they've felt like I've just hacked their tree. But then 18 months later, they're getting new, fresh, vibrant, juicy citrus again. It is pretty full on and we have gone very drastic. But to be honest, the harder you cut it back, the better they come back. This is a mandarin we did two years ago. And I think we actually even cut this one back harder than what we did the grapefruit. And it's just grown absolutely beautifully. The other mandarin tree just down here, that was pruned last year. And you can see we pruned it quite hard and it's come back with new growth. But unfortunately, no fruit, because it's put all its energy and nutrients into the growth of the tree for that first year. Whereas this one, it was pruned the year before. And you can see now, look at the amount of fruit it's producing. So what you need to do is trust the process. From skeleton pruned today to a healthy fruit-bearing tree within two seasons. Mark, you grow quite a variety of citrus. Are they all grafted? I don't think there's actually any other way to grow a citrus tree. There's a few people trying to grow cuttings, but really, the only way to grow them is by grafting them. Basically, it'll produce a lot stronger tree, a lot more pests and disease resistant. It'll have a tree that fruits a lot quicker. So where do you begin the process? It actually takes us three years to grow a citrus tree from the rootstock all the way through to the saleable product. So this is the flying dragon rootstock that we use. We grow it from seed, and this is actually already 12 months old. We then plant them into individual bags out in the paddock. So are you ready to graft onto this now? In theory, that's a perfect one to graft, but unfortunately at this time of year, it's not actively growing. And to graft properly, you really need that active growth so the bark slips. So we'll do it on this tree here to give an example. We actually need some bubwood or some buds to put onto the rootstock. Basically, it's new growth, and you can cut it off like that, and each one of these I can turn into a citrus tree. So I'll take the leaf pediola and we'll cut a little bud. 
Our whole lemon tree will come from that little bud. Wow. So you need a nice clean part of the trunk. And what we do is called a tea bud. So it's simple, up and across to make your tea. Then I've got a special budding knife. I turn over to the bark lifter and I run it up and I just open the bark up. And then that little bud that I cut before simply slips down in the pocket. Oh. And we cut the tail off and look at that. We can't get that wet or let any moisture in, so we use a special budding tape, which is actually really nice and flexible. And we wrap that up all nice and tight. And so we then leave that, and a month later, we come back, and if that bud's alive, then it's green and we're successful. So as you can see, this bud has taken and it's already started to shoot away. At that point in time, we get some secateurs and cut the rootstock off like so. And then that way, that forces all the growth into the new bud to form your tree. As it continues to grow, we obviously stake it. When it gets to the top of the stake, we prune the top and it starts to form a lovely shape. And back here, you can see back when it was grafted probably about a year ago. So effectively, you've brought together the benefits of the wild mongrel rootstock to get the benefits of both plants. In a sense, it's the perfect marriage. Oh, exactly. And in this case, it's actually a dwarf root stock, so it'll keep this tree nice and small, but still produce really good big fruit. 